In this corner, Batman from Batman the Three Jokers. And in this corner, Batman from DC Rebirth. Both of them are on sale right now. If you could only buy one of them, which bat is the better bang for your buck? Place your bets, it's time for another Versus. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and the Batman is finally hitting theaters. To celebrate, we're showcasing Batman figures, both old and new, all month long. Starting off with the packaging, and both figures come in a single carded window box. If you just saw the name and logo, you might not even know which figure's which. On the back of the Three Jokers version, we get a nice promotional shot of Batman on a rooftop. The product shot for Rebirth is a bit more close up and kind of overexposed. Honestly, both of them are good in their own way. For packaging, this round is a draw. Moving on to presentation, and Three Jokers Batman stands at a threatening seven and a quarter inches and weighs in at 5.5 ounces. Rebirth Batman stands at seven on the dot and weighs in at 5.1. Three Jokers is a good basic black and gray Batman with a little extra Michael Keaton razzle dazzle. For one thing, you've got the Ray's logo, very similar to Batman Returns. The utility belt's very fancy and Keaton-like. He's also got the extra ribbing on his gloves and the panels on his boots. Where McFarlane diverted from the source material is the texture. The cape and cowl have a cracked leathery look and feel. Flipping it around and we can see all the folds. We also see the texturing in the gloves and boots. Rebirth, on the other hand, is a pretty straightforward adaptation of the comic. Similar to Three Jokers, he's a black and gray Batman with short ears. As we can see, the cut's very similar. One of the things that defines Rebirth costume, however, is the big black bat symbol with the yellow piping around it. Similarly, the unique black and yellow utility belt, knee pads in the shape of Batman's head, panel lines, and purple lined cape. McFarlane might have gotten a little bit creative with some of the details, but overall, this is one of the most direct adaptations from page to plastic that I've ever seen them do in the DC Multiverse line. One thing I do prefer about the Three Jokers version, however, is how soft the cape is. The Rebirth one is more rigid, which also means it's more heavy. And we all know what that means. I honestly think it has to be a thicker plastic to accommodate the purple paint. Another note on the Three Jokers Batman is that the body was reused from Batman Year 2. Looking underneath and you can even see the ports where the cloth cape pegs in. I do think that some of the proportions are kind of wonky on this, and I'm also not a fan of how the abs are permanently flexed at an angle. Three Jokers is a good base for Batman, but Rebirth is simply more accurate and a completely new sculpt. For a presentation, this round goes to Rebirth. Moving on to posability, and the biggest difference between these figures are the head joints so I'm actually going to save the heads for last. Both figures have swivel hinge shoulders, rotator cuffs, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and McFarlane wrist balls. Both figures have diaphragm joints and dumbbells in the waist. Using both, they can arch back this far, and they can hunch over this far. Below the waist, they both have typical McFarlane hips, bit of swivel, they also have double jointed knees, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankle balls that swivel, hinge, and pivot. Again, the biggest difference is the head. Rebirth has a dumbbell joint. As with most figures, it's cut at the base of his skull. Three Jokers, on the other hand, has a ball joint at the base of his neck. As we can see, Rebirth can look up a bit more. Despite the fact that this one has a shorter neck, they both look down the same, tilt to one side and tilt to the other. Thanks to the movable neck and action poses, I will say that this one seems a bit more natural, but in general, I do prefer this style. Honestly, a combination of the two would be perfect. Personal preference aside, there's no significant difference in the range of articulation of these two figures. For posability, this round is another draw. Moving on to playability and three Jokers Batman comes with a trading card and a figure stand. Pause here if you want to read what it says. He also comes with a scrapnel gun. It fits in his hand like so. But where the heck is this big honking thing fitting in his utility belt? Moving on to Rebirth, and he also comes with a trading card and a figure stand. And if you want to see what that one says, pause here. Spoiler alert, it's pretty much just the same first paragraph as this one. Similar to Three Jokers, he also comes with a grapnel gun. While the Three Jokers one is in mid-firing, this one is not, and it's also a bit more compact. It fits in his hand like so. Unlike Three Jokers, Rebirth comes with an additional accessory, a Batarang. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figures play with others. For some DC Multiverse Batman comparisons, here they are with Flashpoint. Next up is Dark Knight's Death Metal, one of the coolest Batman figures ever made. Here we have Batman Year 2. Again, this one and three Jokers share most of the same body. And lastly, here they are with Battinson. For some black and gray Batman comparisons, here he is with Batman the Animated Series. Speaking of animated series, here he is with the Batman. Thanks to the capsules and the ovals, their belts are surprisingly similar. Next up is DC Super 
superheroes by Hasbro. First, something closer to his own size, this one's from DC Direct. Lastly, here he is with DC Universe Classics by Mattel. For a rebirth comparison, here he is with a battle damage one by McFarlane Toys. Here we have DC Icons. Lastly, the one that I'm the most interested in, DC Essentials. This figure is very special to me as it was my very first video on this channel. It's also the main Batman that I've used in my Batman display. For some Bat Family comparisons, here they are with Nightwing. This one is by DC Essentials. Here they are with the Red Hood, also by DC Essentials. Here they are with a couple of different versions of Batgirl. The short one is DC Essentials and the tall one is McFarlane Toys. And here they are with Robin. Damien is McFarlane and Tim Drake is Mattel. On the subject of Mattel, here they are with Alfred. For some other allies, here we have Superman. This one is Action Comics 1000. This one is Rebirth. And here is the Rebirth head on the Dark Knight Returns body. For some speedster comparisons, here is the Flash and the Reverse Flash. The Flash is from DC Essentials and the Reverse Flash is McFarlane. For a Wonder Woman comparison, we have New 52 by DC Collectibles, Rebirth by DC Essentials, and Last Night on Earth by McFarlane Toys. But of course, what is Batman without his arch rival, the Joker? Here we have an Alex Ross version by DC Direct, which has sadly lost its arm. But on the subject of DC Direct, here's Joker from Batman and Son. Here we have the deceased version from DC Essentials. Moving into McFarlane Toys, we have the Rebirth version of Joker. Here we have the Mortal Kombat 11 version. And for the three Jokers, to go along with our three Jokers Batman, we have the Criminal, the Comedian, which is one of my favorite Joker figures ever, and the Clown. For a relative scale comparison, here they are with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And of course, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Which Batman works better for you is going to depend largely on the other figures that you display him with. For my Bat family, which is a mix and match of different companies, this Batman is perfect. That said, this isn't too shabby either. And if your Bat family is mainly McFarlane, this will definitely work. But playability is more than just accessories and figure comparisons, it's also about head swaps and customs. Because Rebirth is so small compared to other McFarlane Batmans, there really aren't any DC Multiverse figures I can swap them with. That said, there is one figure I'm very curious about. The DC Essentials head on the new Rebirth body. I love this. It sits a bit high and is a bit gappy, but with a little bit of tweaking, really works. Conversely, here's the McFarlane head on the Essentials body. Doesn't look bad, but it kind of loses the neck. Cuts a pretty good silhouette, though. Similarly, Three Jokers Batman has some head swap limitations, but this time it's because of his neck joint. That said, there are still two that we can look at. Here we have the Three Jokers head on the Battle Damage body. Some of the texture detail definitely matches, but overall I think it's just a bit too small. The Battle Damaged head on the Three Jokers body, however, is a different story. For one thing, it gives him more of a neck, and for another, it gets rid of the texture. To my eye, this has a real Batman the Animated Series quality. The Batman Year 2 head looks pretty cool also. It would have to be painted, of course, but just like the Capullo version, it also solves the texture and neck problem. Head swaps aside, and I'm amazed at the customs I've seen of this figure. Most of them are just people painting the trunks black, which honestly I'm probably going to do too, but I've also seen people do a lot more extensive repaints. For customizers, this Batman is an incredible canvas. I'm sure that somebody might repaint Rebirth to match the blue and gray color scheme, but so far I haven't seen it. While the Rebirth Batman does come with more accessories, Three Jokers is more versatile and scales with more figures. For playability, I'm giving it to Three Jokers. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Both bats retail for $20, so on the surface it seems like a draw. That being said, Rebirth Batman is a 100% new sculpt and comes with two weapons instead of one, making him the better value. For price, I'm giving it to Rebirth, who wins the fight 4-3. to three. Both of these Batmans are awesome, and this fight was an incredibly close call. Let me know your pick in the comments below. For another Versus video, check out DC Rebirth Superman vs. The Dark Knight Returns, and for more Cape Crusader content, check out my look at Batman Year 2. There's lots more Batman content coming throughout the month, so make sure you've subscribed. I'll be back again real soon, same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, play nice and have fun.